Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. Today's show is going to feature Meg Benedicti and also Deborah Giusti. Yay. <laughs> These goddesses are here to share an overview of the Ascension Tips, a simple blueprint for your journey to ascension. We all know there's a lot going on inside of people, in the collective, on the planet. And so it's time to have that conversation. Dare to Dream has won the COVR Award for Best Podcast Radio Show. Welp Magazine named Dare to Dream, one of the best 20 podcasts to listen to this year. It's high-ranking self-improvement in Apple Podcasts and nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane Here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work out into the world. So if you'd like to become a facilitator or join one of their classes anywhere globally, go to drdanehear, H-E-E-R.com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I'm a media visibility specialist. How I disseminate that out into the world is I am a book writing coach and I show spiritual messengers the steps to write a highly engaging book. I also have a company that turns your book into a guaranteed international bestseller, and I do all the heavy lifting for the author. And finally, I teach you how to become your own publicist and show you how to book radio and podcast guest interviews. I'm about to launch a free webinar to teach you how, if you'd like to join and learn how to be very visible at a time when you came here with a message and a gift, and it is your time to share that message out with the world, let me teach you how. Go to debbie-inger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. My guests today, Meg Benedicti and Deborah Giusti, are here to share an overview of their book, Ascension Tips, a simple blueprint for your journey to ascension. Meg is a spiritual teacher, author, and luminary. Over the past three decades, Meg has become a notable pioneer and international master healer in quantum healing and spiritual activations, working with clients spanning the globe. Deborah Giusti has been an entrepreneur for over four decades. Some of her businesses include the Harmony Festival, her email marketing company, Wishing Well Promotions, and producing Saturday Night Alive for the Global Peace Tribe shows, reaching almost 50,000 people on Saturday night. Deborah produces workshops, hosts panel discussions, and creates educational materials. Meg and Deborah recently published Ascension Tips so anyone can understand the Ascension process taking place and fully participate. I've got two websites for you. If you'd like to learn more, go to ascensiontips.com. And you can also download a free copy of Ascension Tips and also get the revisions as they come out. And that's ascensionrevealed.com. You can get an online program. It's a deep dive with Deborah and Meg sharing about important Ascension Tips. And with that, I welcome Meg and Deborah to Dare to Dream. It's so great to have you. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Great to be here. Absolutely. So Meg and Deborah, what was the inception of this mission? Because you guys are definitely on a mission. I'm on your email list. I'm seeing what's coming down. I also have other newsletters and I see other people really supporting you. And it's a great thing to support. So what was the impulse to create, to educate through your Project Ascension Tips? I can share that um, I woke up to the Ascension process around 2012 when a lot really did happen. Hmm. And at that time, I knew everything that I had been through, especially the dark night of the soul that I'd just come out of, was part of the ascension process. And I started to understand at a whole new level what was going on in the planet. So I looked for teachers that were out there, and there weren't that many, but Meg was there. 
along with a few other ones. She was in Mount Shasta, and she was one of the first teachers to come out and really share deeply about the Ascension process. So I personally contacted her and I said, hey, sister, what's mm -hmm. up? And we connected um, in a soul contract mm -hmm. and just started connecting then and started bounding. And she helped me and I started following her. And then my mission is to really get the information out to the masses. So I realized that the Ascension tips, a concise overview of what was going on in the planet is really what needed to come out to help people understand everything that's going on. And especially now, after three years of a mandatory, what I call spiritual retreat, where people were forced to look in the mirror as the shutdown happened and really go through their internal process and everything on the planet is escalating. So um, for me, it was tuning into Meg and tuning into our soul contract to, to unite together both our forces and bring this to the people now that is so needed. Yeah. Yes, just to add to that, um, I went through my own personal awakening 30 years ago. And so in a way, this is just kind of taken over my reality and going through my own kind of trial and error of the ascension process and and uh through the through the whole process i've always walked very carefully and closely with archangel metatron and his guidance so that's that's been the lineage that i've been bringing through and in 2012 i was invited to present in mount shasta for it was the it was the full solar solar eclipse happening up above mount shasta in may of 2012 and after i came home from doing that event i found very immediately that my soul was still in mount shasta and i had to move up there so that's what got me up there and opening up a healing center there and my so so deborah's has her you know her blueprint and how she's bringing this through mine's been more hands-on and 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 kind of learning how this all operates on myself first and then about 25 years ago i started doing one-on-one -on -one client sessions in la when i was living there and just continuing to teach it and so our our collaboration has been very very um i think mutual and enhancing using our skill set in a way to bring this out to the world Amazing. And so in 2012, was Metatron giving you nudges, like the ascension's coming, you need to prepare, be alert, be, were you getting information? It was way before, it was in the 90s that I would have visitations in my room <laughs> with Metatron. And that's when it became uh, very clear. Um, my life in, you know, the corporate world is done in a way. Uh, I have a whole nother a blueprint and, and mission that was activating and it really pretty much took over. So it, I would say I'm, I'm like a emissary for Metatron to bring his technique through to the world. He is the angelic guardian that's it that's overseeing the whole planetary ascension and so he's provided us these tools and techniques to accelerate our own ascension so that's what i bring out uh just through my own personal experience and then teaching it with clients over the years i think that's so important i heard recently that time has sped up and science has confirmed that one what used to be one second is now one and a half seconds mm -hmm. is and it feels like this mm -hmm. without a doubt what do you know about this what do you know about time what is it important to understand about the transformation like it or not it's happening within our personal lives what's going well, on they even call it the quickening don't they and that's really what is happening it's it's uh it's an infusion of galactic light that is uh, altering the geomagnetic field is actually yeah. it's softening and weakening the magnetic fields that lock time in. So that's happening in our own fields, it's happening in the planetary field. And so as the magnetic fields start to uh, ease up or soften, we call it the veils, you know, and, and new age li lingo, that's the veils. But that's really just between the left and right brain, between the, the particle and the wave state that is energy between the soul and the human. So as those magnetic fields or the veils thin and dissolve, we're moving into an acceleration. And that's what Metatron offers to us. He, it's called the quantum vortex and actually helps spin our atoms faster. It helps to accelerate 
our energy into higher frequencies, higher vibrations, so that we're actually, think of it kind of like you're, you're unlocking all that dense compression of gravity and the magnetic fields, and your field is opening, expanding, and your container is starting to access these higher dimensions. So we're well, you know, 3D is the physical particle field, height, width, depth, right? 4D is time and the measurement of time and distance, 4D. 5D is the quantum field of the particle and the wave state united again. That's what we're evolving our access into again, where we're able to use both our left and right brain simultaneously, right? Left brain's particle field, physical separation, right brain is multidimensional access to the quantum field this is extraordinary what we're going through and it's disorienting as well and so it's i think that's possibly why we're kind of moving through it gradually so we can continue to upgrade and adjust and and adapt to the change but everything's and, up. and this is what we're being called to do and this is what the ascension is about we're, we have to operate in whole new ways it's a whole new operating system. So how we used to do it with kind of a logical mind plan doesn't work. You've got to operate from the now and from your center and whole other abilities to kind of stay on top with what we're evolving forward. And that's basically what the Ascension tips. It's not to rely just on your mind and the old mm -hmm. duality, limited ways of being, but really expand your awareness and your way of being working through the now to really operate at whole level levels of your spirit and intuition and your superpowers basically because that's what's all coming online now if we allow it and if we go through the healing that we're also being encouraged to go through on very deep levels so we can operate at the higher frequencies and higher vibrations oh i have two questions about that when you say that so the first question is when you were talking about this compression, um, and then on the other hand, we've got cells that are literally spinning quicker and accelerating. So what is that, if we could see, if there was an infrared that allowed us to see what was happening in the human, in the 3D, would you see more light coming in and almost darkness density coming out? What would that look like? Well, when we are accelerating the spin momentum of the, of the atoms, we're also changing the direction. So compression is a clockwise compression of energy to hard, dense particles, our atoms. So when we get into the quantum vortex and we do a, rever a spin reversal, we open and we're going into an expanded spin, right? An expanded vortex spin. And it opens all the space up between the, the particles, the atoms. And that's what you're talking about. Then the light can get in. And in a way, you're like all your little atoms are bobbing in a sea of light now instead of this compressed, dense, you know, form we've been locked into. That's how I see it if, in the, from the quantum lens that I see everything. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. And then, Deborah, when you talk about our abilities are coming online, and I know your book refers to psychic abilities are going to start to activate. Talk more about that. What does that mean for people? Or can you give us some examples of that? I think it's pretty obvious that psychic awareness, psychic understanding, and all of that is much more mainstream than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. So this has really come online to the public. It's not a quirky thing like it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And people understand and start recognizing mainstream people that they hear a phone ring and, and they know who it is. So people are starting to operate at those other frequencies as they move forward at whatever level their ascension journey is, because it's different for everyone. And, um, you know, it, it, it really is directed by the higher self on all levels, but it's also the same process for everyone where we are operating in the higher frequencies. We're graduating to the next level of being and we're able to access all that's available there. That has been shut down as we as humanity has been kind of dumbed down to the limited level that we have that we've all heard about as compared to the expanded divine human that's possible that so many of us have been on a spiritual path to achieve and work towards. So yeah, te telepathy and even in the future by locating um, and many of our spiritual teachers already access all the, like Meg does, all the communications with the higher dimensional beings, all that can be accessible to everyone as we open up and start operating at new levels of being. I think that's so, so true. I even experienced that 
in this show. I mean, on the one hand, yes, I have an awakening that's happening of some healing abilities. I certainly wasn't aware of before, but I am now and becoming more so. And at the same time, I think before we started the show, we were all talking, the three of us. And Meg came on my show 13, 14 years ago. I've been doing the show about 16 years. And back then, it was still cool for me to talk about spirituality. It was very cool for me to have people who channeled on. I was into it. My audience was open to it, but still it was really cutting edge. <laughs> but then about four years ago, entered the conversation about UFOs and actually bringing people on the show who channeled extraterrestrials and going, you know, Dr. Stephen Greer has been here. And I mean, deep, deep, beautiful conversations. And there was a question when I started to incorporate that because I have to follow my greatest expression of curiosity. And I did in bringing that in. And I didn't know how people would respond, but God bless this audience. They have been 1000% on board. I don't believe that would have happened 16 years ago, definitely not 13 or 14 years ago, but I do believe the timing was magical. And so I see it even in my business or even in who I attract, book writing students or clients, they're all spiritual messengers with these amazing gifts. And so, yeah, I love that we can amplify even that out to the world as a norm. Like, look at humanity. This is who we are. And what you're sharing is happening all over the world. So what your phenomenon that you experience is happening all over. I track what's going on all over the world. And we had a worldwide audience. And it's just clear that people are popping open at this point. Mm -hmm. And this is the ascension. This is this is a planetary ascension that's happening now, the stage that we're at, which Meg was talking about as we're receiving the codes and the energies and going into a different sector of the universe. This is what is predestined and planned, this acceleration, this quickening that's happening to all of us. There's a few of us that have been on board since the beginning, <laughs> you know, trudging through, you know, crafting the, trudging through the, the trails and opening the gates. But now it's a floodgate. And this is, this is why so many people are incarnated here now. I've heard that if you got a ticket for incarnation now, you scored because this is a place to be for acceleration of your spiritual evolution. So even though it's crazy here, that's what birth is like, you know, you've got to go through all the guck and the, and the deep healing that's needed. This We're in the, the stage of purification now, which is what everyone's going through. That's why it's so challenging out in the mm. world and internally, everyone, it's as above, so below. It's the mm. same inside as what's going on, all the dysfunction is coming up to the surface to be revealed and healed. So that's true on the inner, and that's what we see daily on the outer as everything's getting exposed in our world. So it can be known, cleared, and taken to the next level. Wow, so birth that on earth. All over. Yeah. That was it's huge what you just said. Like that was a inhale and just like be with that information. Uh, really big stuff, Deborah. Mm -hmm. Multi-dimensional realities. We all, well, we, and those watching, we know this exists. It's mind blowing. Really, it's kind of mind blowing because you know I'm here, but I'm really there, and I'm <laughs> everything all at once. And so are you, and in different forms and shapes and galaxies and everything. And and even this moment is happening with every new choice I make. Hard to conceive, but I do believe. So how does multidimensional realities play into this? What's happening with the ascension and multidimensional realities? When I look through the quantum lens into the holographic universe, it looks like a kind of like kaleidoscope of all these possible timelines, all these possible potential futures, all that's like in motion in the field. And so it's very vibrant and it responds to us, responds to our visions, responds to our consciousness and our intentions. And so the more that we're 
kind of delayering all that density, the three D density, and the and the and the the pain, the suffering, the traumas, all of that is that if we process that, we transmute that, we're getting lighter and lighter, and our own dormant light body is starting to turn on and activate, and that's where we're heading. We're heading to coming kind of out of the old three D human energetics into more of our own galactic soul light body that's been designed for this incarnation and it's just been waiting for this uh, and so as we i call it the soul pillar you know you get more and more into your merkaba taurus into your soul pillar you start to turn it all on it starts to activate your soul blueprint both right and left brain are firing third eye right into your quantum lens and you begin to see what's in motion you begin to see what is responding to you it's immediate you can self-correct you can add more you can take away and you become this vibrant you know kind of an alchemist in the now of what you are influencing in the quantum field to become your reality it's a completely different way than how we were born we're moving away from an old operating system it's the hierarchy patriarchy you know that this is a very imbalanced operating system and we're moving in into this new earth system, which is a circular system, a cir like a circle of family of light, right? A community, collaboration, connection. It's a completely different way of living. And so it just takes adjustments, you know, as we drop the dead weight of our earthly history of being in the hierarchy, we begin to light everything up and begin to live multidimensionally. Yeah. It sounds also like you're a computer programmer of your own being, like delete this. That's a virus that served me right. once upon a time, but no more. Let's incorporate this new app. This is up leveling, upgrading the whole system. So I, I love that as a metaphor. Um, is there guidance, Deborah, that you can provide for people right now who are on this ascension journey. And I have another question that's coming up. So sorry for two at once. So I'm looking for guidance. And also, have you noticed that a lot of people are leaving the planet? Uh, yeah, those are two big questions. Um, guidance, that's why we wrote the Ascension yes. Tips because it's really simple and 88 tips. It shows the different stages of ascension and everything that's coming to you and what you can do and what's coming up and the evolution to the divine human in the new earth. Because that's what we're really talking about yes. is really we came here to create the new earth. And this has been prophesized in all the religions, all the indigenous peoples, um, you know, all the sacred scripture, that this is what we came here to create. And it's very clear that that is the stage we're moving into. So a lot of us came here to build the new earth. That's what Meg's... Uh, website is called that's 20 years <laughs> New Earth central so she knew what she came here for so um yes the planet is ascending we are ascending with her into the next level of the graduation which is the next stage back to oneness consciousness fifth dimensional reality christ consciousness all of that so that's where we're going and yes some people who feel like they don't want to graduate and go that level are saying okay, I'm out of here. I'm going to come back and do it somewhere else. And they may go to another planet. They may go to another timeline. But yeah, there are people that are choosing to leave because they're not ready. They don't want to put up with this birth that has to happen now because it's it's going to rock and roll still yeah. for a while here. You know, we're, we're going into some trippy times still as the old crumbles and the new gets born. And so, yes, people are leaving uh, for many reasons. And the indigos are coming in. If you've noticed, the children are just amazing. Mm. They don't come in with all the blocks and the constrictions and everything that we had to break through in our world. They're coming in pure and they're having parents that are not suppressing mm. them. They're having parents that are just letting them blossom like flowers. So the leaders are coming in. So yes, there's a whole shift of choices of what soul choose and and souls can choose whatever is right for them and anything's good it doesn't mean like mean like you failed the essential mm -hmm. like we do in in school it means you want more time you're taking another path no judgment there everyone has their own path of of where to go and what to do so yes the ascension tips that people can download for free at ascensiontips.com gives a really, it's only 24 pages because people are busy. They don't have time to kind of like 
run anything, but it does point to what can happen. And then there's Ascension teachers that are on the scene now, like Meg and other teachers that once you're on the path, things come up in your field to support mm -hmm. you because it's your higher self that gives you this journey and there's synchronicity starts to happen, magical connections start to happen. So you take this journey and you're on a magical mystery tour mm -hmm. if you do it consciously. So it's it's really incredible. So yeah, the guidance, the help is there if you choose and open your heart to it. And I, think the, I just want to say, I think the guidance is really important. Mm -hmm. I know as much as there is enormous magic in my life, um, there are things outside of me that have been really interesting to witness and ingest. So I work with people. I mean, maybe I always have, because that's my path. Growth has just always been my path. It's probably my greatest value. Yeah. And I feel like right now, like I need that consistency to keep you know, putting Humpty Dumpty back together again, but also, you know, the up leveling, I can viscerally feel it like and constantly. With anything, if you want to be good at it, you hire coaches, right? right? I mean, that's, I have an Ascension coach. Meg coaches people nonstop. Mm -hmm. So that is a part because you can only see as far as you can see. And sometimes when you're in your, your wounding and your healing and trigger, you don't see very far at all. So you really do need someone to take your hand and just pull you out of that. And you go, oh, that's what I went through. Okay, clear, delete. We are removing that. I am stepping up to the next level with my awareness now and with my consciousness. And so, yes, it's important to have a guide and it's important to help each other. I mean, just what you're doing now, this show is helping so many people. This is being a guide for people. So we're, we're meant to all help each other because this is a collective awakening. From what I understand, this kind of thing hasn't happened in a long, long time. Ascension has happened spontaneously with various masters. We know Yeshua, Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, St. Germain, all of those. It was kind of like a one pop here and there. This is a time when the whole planet can support each other and humanity is graduating up to this next level with the planet. So it's a different thing that's happening here and we're meant to collaborate, support each other and get together, which is in the last three years, a lot of us have connected so deeply now with people all around um, on Zoom and on the internet. And this is part of what is supporting the Ascension now and the information that can get out you know, I mean, YouTube, you, you turn on your phone, go to YouTube, and you can find your spiritual teacher on there that can say the perfect guidance that was like, oh, my God, that's what I needed to hear. I get it now. So, yeah, being open to guidance and personal coaching and all of that. It's really prevalent if you just open yourself up to it in your ascension process. Yeah, I think I, I just yeah. want to ask you a question because. I've known you for many years and um, you're really unique. And I want to just acknowledge the work you do and have been doing, that you've been a leader in this field, putting on events, uh, hosting things first in person, now online. You've got a huge digital footprint, huge following. I see you at all the events, lucky me. And I'm captivated by who you are. Have you always been on purpose like this? Have you always known this was your mission? And what did you graduate in? Like, were you, were you spirituality leader one on one hundred and one, or what? What has that path been for you? Um, I would I call myself an Earth Mother, so I knew I was never to have children, but I was to take my feminine energy and juju and put it into the planetary transformation. And I think I woke up in the 60s when one of the first transformation came, you know, with the the 60s, the hippies, the the love, peace, freedom, compassion. That was like one of the first of, oh, my God, my people, mm -hmm. you know, and I was a teenager and but I was near San Francisco. So the hippies were starting creating communes in my city. So after school, I go hang out with the hippies. <laughs> the communes you know and lots was coming through so i was i really tapped into that level of consciousness and then i began the harmony festival at 22 years old so i've been really blessed to be on mission um 
it's a blessing and a curse because it, it causes me to work nonstop. So sometimes I complain with spirit and my higher self. What is this? People are outside playing. I feel like the little red hen. I'm always like working behind the scenes to make everything happen. But being on mission is such a gift to be so clear. And I feel like my guidance is instructions from spirit. They'll give me another you know, project. And I know with all my resources and my manifestation abilities and my courage to just leap out there and fly that I can do it. Um, the last thing I did was take on creating an EE system healing center in Sebastopol and Marin, which is the new technology healing that's coming in now to help with the ascension because it brings people back to a healed divine blueprint in their DNA. So that's like a whole new project that I started. And I said, really, Spirit? That on top of everything else? But Spirit provided every step of the way, the perfect people, the money, the just the support to do it. Even though it's still a lot, um, there's a way to commit to Spirit and allow the manifestation to open up and be blessed by the synchronicities, the guidance, all that needs to happen if you just stay focused and committed to the project. So yeah, I'm an earth mother and I'm still very fertile. So <laughs> That's great. And you know, the bennies of what you do, what I do, are the people we get to meet. Like Meg, <laughs> we get to meet some of the most gifted people and have relationship with them. It is a masterclass and it's a life and game changer. So Yes, it is a trade-off, <laughs> this amount of work. I totally get it. But also so divinely guided to have these people come in and interact with on a daily basis. And I say my mission is my spiritual teacher. So my mm -hmm. daily life is my ongoing spiritual teacher. It tests me at all levels consistently. So. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we're grateful for you, Deborah. We really mm -hmm. are. We need those courageous folks there aren't many, but those of you, those of us who step up to the plate and say, yes, and I belong here and let me show you. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And thank you for mentioning EES system because I'm actually trying one out this weekend. I've known about it for a while and I finally just took had a moment to take some action. And beautiful. so we'll be going out to Thousand Oaks. It's a little bit of a distance, but we're still gonna go and spend a couple of hours there. So yeah, I wanna check out that system too. I've heard uh -huh. about it. Great things. Great. And Deborah, I want to talk for you. Um, I do know your story and you're a walk-in and so forth. And, and I, I let's just say, because your story is pretty compelling. People can go to your website and you've got a beautiful video there that I like how explains your hero's journey, your Shiro's journey and how you've gotten here and what you said yes to very courageously. I understand you recently went to Egypt and you were offering activation. Can you tell us about that and about sacred sites and why everybody's traveling right now to do this? I know, right? Well, <clears throat> when I first worked in, in uh, the January earthquake in Los Angeles, 1994, um, I immediately started working with vortex energy. So this is something my human didn't know anything about. This is all getting uh, channeled in from my higher self and, and working directly with Archangel Metatron. And as I would go into the vortex energy, it works like a think of it kind of like a, a time jumper, right? And so I would find myself dropping into other uh, space time coordinates. And one of the places I kept getting pulled to was this ancient civilization in Egypt called Zep Tepi. And this was probably 100,000 years ago. This is prior to Atlantis, prior to Lemuria. This is what I would consider the first original uh, star-seeded civilization on Earth. The 12 root races coming in from the multiverse, joining with the guardian angelics and seeding this 12-dimensional, 12-strand DNA morphic field that was the divine human it was fascinating to observe it because it wasn't this dense particle field of matter that we are now it was this vibrant field 12th dimensional being that responded to the consciousness that was moving through it in the moment so it was very much 
a, a co-creator, kind of a creator God of its reality constantly in every moment. And I'm watching this and I'm like, okay, one, why are we here? Why are you showing me this? And two, what the hell happened to the human race? Like, how did we go from there to now? We're in this kind of devolution of just a two strand double helix, you know, basically duality reality. And so it over, so that's 30 years ago that I started getting pulled in, pulled in, pulled in. And, and I would write about it and chant a little bit about it. It was always kind of on the sidelines. And people ask me, when are you going to go to Egypt? When are you going to go connect to the Zeptepi? And I'm like, I don't know. We'll see. Never felt the call until this year. And it was also because uh, it was a tour that was led by the renowned Kathleen McGowan, who, of course, is a historian and knows about Zeptepi. So she was the one who could point out, OK, there's the hieroglyphs right up there. The Amazing. I know her books, by the way. I know of her. <laughs> yes. She's brilliant. This brilliant. is incredible, all this connection. Please. So I was guided from day one uh, in the Sphinx and went into Giza Pyramid and for two weeks we're going into all these sacred sites, sacred temples. And Metatron was working with me directly and having me open the Zeptepi gates back up to the earth plane. And it was like a fire hose hitting me. I was wiped out and sick for a good month. It was so much power coming out of these Zeptepi gates. And we finished the final, uh, our private showing of the Osirian in Abydos, Egypt, which is considered the original Zeptepi temple. It's close to the pub, um, close to the pub, but of course, Kathleen has her, her contacts, so she got us in there. And that's the gate, that's the, the temple with the, the, the granite slabs with the flower of life laser etched all over them. And it is a powerful Zeptepi gateway. And so that was, we did that in April, all that energy is starting to spread into the field now. It's coming in for us. Our human bodies have never experienced it before, and it's pretty strong and powerful. But what I'm watching it do is it's getting us particularly focused right now into the lower 3D human chakras, right? It's root sacral solar plexus purging all the lifetimes of trauma and suffering and fear and out of those chakras in a way what's happening is the the original human 3d chakras are finishing they're beginning to departiculate the soul pillar is going to replace it and so this is an excel you talk about an acceleration this is a very strong acceler acceleration that started that is helping to compel us more and more into our soul light body it's it's extraordinary and i think anyone and i'm also working with clients who were actually in that they were present in some form probably more semi-physical um, in the original zeptepi civilization and they're getting lit up with that memory and why they're here and what they're here to contribute i think of it as a kind of a full circle circle moment right you know the alpha omega where we started let's say a hundred thousand years ago we moved through all these collapsing civilizations to finally be able to like create the template, the creational template for the 12 dimensional divine human code to turn on and activate within us. Profound, how that will unfold is uh, we're all gonna find out. <laughs> this is happening live. Interesting, because that was my next question. Both of you had referred, the trickiness is going to continue. We haven't completed that. We still have a ways to go. How long do you think we have to go? Do you have any sense of that? And do you have any sense at least in this moment on this timeline of what the new earth will be like. Well, if you follow the astrology, the astrology is, of course, going hand in hand with what's happening. And we just had Pluto in Capricorn, which is the patriarchy, right? The rigid institutions. And it's been in, I think it's in for like a good 20 years, right? It's hammering the patriarchy. And it just did a little bit of a jump over into Aquarius earlier in the year. It retrograded back. It's back in Capricorn, hammering the patriarchy some more. It'll be next year, it'll be over another back and forth a couple of times. It'll finally settle into Aquarius and enhance the golden age of Aquarius. So I say at least, you know, another good year of this kind of threshold point we're at. 
I also believe because we're, as Deborah mentioned, so many galactic souls have come to be on the planet right now that we are in live influencing how this forms in the future in front of us. So when we talk about birthing the new earth, we're all contributing to that now. So it's hard to do predictions because we're moving out of kind of that time lag that locks things in. We're moving into just literally co-creating this in the mo in the now moment simultaneously in the quantum field it can go as fast as we want or it can go as slow as we want so it's really how the collective responds to what's happening and i would agree as i listen to all the other teachers and ascension teachers a lot of them say as of 24 we're just going to go through another incredible challenging time but then break open to new levels whether it's the solar flash or the immediate activations that are coming from all the planets and then, as we've been talking about, things are going to shift. Some things can just kind of shift immediately as we are going into next levels of being within ourselves and within the planet. So again, it's hard to predict. But then also, this is a very long-term cycle, too. Yeah. We're going to continue to evolve for the next thousand years towards the golden age. Yeah. So we are going to continue to rebuild new levels of the new earth and describing the new earth that's what meg and i did in our last section of the ascension tips the first section being the awakening second one being complete transmutation third one being soul embodiment where we start to live the new earth principles in our being and the fourth section is about the new earth mm -hmm. so if you download that it gives some previews of what the new earth is going to be like and very similar to what we are wanting like a lot of these soul groups are starting to build a, a world that lives with the earth ecology and mm -hmm. lives with the natural forces instead of consuming them and therefore mm -hmm. everything starts to be organic and alive kind of like if lemuria used to be where like mm -hmm. homes were part of the living reality and everything in nature was just brilliant and alive and reinforcing the fo the force of mother earth as compared to our cities which kind of delete the force of the yeah. mother earth and a society that lives in collaboration where everyone has their unique essence showcased and revealed and contributing to society instead of the pyramid where the people at the top seem to think they know what's going on and tell the rest to do it's more of a collaborative circle of co-creation that whole um in a hologram way supports each other and that's where the society can make a manifest and also other we are going to use technology not really the technology that's coming in now the silicon technology that goes to the transhumanism agenda but that's another topic but it's going to be the organic crystal technology that in other areas in other cycles like in atlantis and Omoria, we started to harness that mm -hmm. so some of our um, life survival ways are going to be taken care of and we can get more into the arts and more into creativity and start to create at whole new levels of being so and love peace harmony is going to rule love frequency is the bottom line not what we've been doing on this planet earth we're kind of we're separate you know the guy over there is not part of me so i don't have to i don't care if he's not eating it doesn't matter to me we are all connected and we are all con connected as one and love is really the fifth dimensional the higher frequencies is what people what the higher dimensions live at so a lot of that is going to be seen and what we're going to start to bring through and create as we start transitioning but then the old structures need to fall, which is what's happening now. Mm -hmm. so. I just I just led a retreat in Mount Shasta this last week for the seven seven gateway seven 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 gateway, and I was and people came in from all around you know U U S and Canada and Australia, and it was about forty people bonding, never met each other, and I watched the New Earth community form. It was just heart centered, no judgment. Everyone was in, in bliss together. We were all intentioning and working in the field, on the grids, like everyone showed up and they were very involved in creating this new earth. So the, I think we're gonna see more and more of this where that circle we're talking about just continues to grow and grow around the world. Yes, and part of how we get there, uh, I know in your book, you call it the one consciousness. And you also talk in your book about 
It's important to own your projections. It's important to do the shadow work. So I think, I don't know when this came out, Shadow, I remember the woman who actually made it very popular decades ago, but here we are in the middle of something very amplified for true transformation, for true healing. If there are people who are saying, well, can you kind of explain it in now terms and ascension terms, how would they do shadow work? What is efficient? What's gentle? And how can they accomplish shadow work so they can create, you know, these things you're talking about that are coming up both collectively and personally, they're saying physically heal this, emotionally heal this, lineage wise heal this. How can they do that? Well, I can just share that. Uh, I came across the term shadow where Carl Jung coined the frame, the shadow, and he calls it the unconscious self, right? The hidden self that what we're not aware is, as you said, active and projecting, uh, we're blinded to it in a sense. So as we, you know, open and remove the veils, we become the observer of our own energy. We become the observer of our reality. That's when we begin to discover these hidden parts of ourselves, this unconscious uh, self that's acting out is harmful, is what we would call, you know, not in the light, right? It's not enlightened, it's in its shadow energy. Um, there's, I'm sure lots of techniques out there. I can on, only share the one that I was guided with uh, Archangel Metatron is to bring everything inside us into the crystalline diamond light of purification. We are we're starting to illuminate it, reveal it. We have to become conscious of that core wounding to be able to heal it and then we go into what we call in the second phase of ascension, the transmutation phase. So, so this is where we're, uh, I utilize vortex energy, the quantum vortex to start to kind of dredge this energy up and out and bring it into healing, bring it into the light, bring it into conscious awareness. So then we transcend it and it's no longer running in us. And this is, you know, ancestral patterns and mind conditioning and past life karma. I mean, it's the whole kitchen sink right that we have it's all held in here in your morphic field and it and it and and it we call, i call it delayering it's just you know and you you heal one layer and you get free of it and you you rise up into higher higher vibration and then the next layer shows itself so it's a continual delayering process um, I, pr I promise everyone you will hit the bottom of the barrel at some point. <laughs> I get asked this all the time, like, is this going on for years? I would say, and this is part of why Deborah and I wrote the, the tips is this is a lifestyle you're choosing. Okay. So just dive into it and, and continue to be present with it because it's, it's you, it's your transformation. It's your reality that you are showing up for shadow work. Yeah. It's gotta be done. And I'm glad you brought that up because this is really what's up now. It's called the purification process that we're in. And if you've noticed, trauma is a big awareness sure in is. The field now. So people are really addressing the trauma, whether it's being beat when you were a kid. It may even be past life trauma. Yeah. It yes. may be societal ancestral trauma, mm -hmm. but really it's the trauma that triggers you back to a negative lower vibration and you can't function at the higher vibrations that we're talking about. So that's why we're saying healing that core wound, that trauma, which a lot of it is awareness. So you're not just kind of programmed to think that's who you are when you feel that come up and healing that is going to allow you to sustain at the higher vibrations mm -hmm. of awareness of joy of bliss instead of going into the negative programming that happens with with what the trauma has so this is one of the big things one of the keys in the transmutation process which is stage two to really completely clear yourself and there's really so many ways it can be shamanic work mm -hmm. it can be going into whole foods and seeing a poster on the thing and like oh that's the workshop i'm supposed to go to to really allow myself the time to really feel myself and understand what happened to me in some abuse thing and just forgive it and heal it and clear it so it doesn't come up when something else comes up that's similar and trigger that and all of a sudden you're in a state of being and then you're missing the opportunity and the synchronicity that was supposed to come in that door because you're in this down negative state so we're talking about healing that 
personally and collectively so yeah. we can operate at the higher vibrations in the in the higher frequencies so that's a key point to the ascension process especially now I also think as you're going through the transmutation phase that we're talking about you are in a way reconnecting to these fragmented parts of yourself that broke off during the trauma yes. so this is also not only you transmuting the trauma the pain the suffering the shadow but you're reintegrating and becoming more of a whole being as well you're recapturing or reclaiming more of your power that was lost during the abuse or the persecution or whatever happened 100 percent. yes 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 i am um, sadly, in my last two weeks of a six-month shamanic school with Dr. Alberto Violdo, oh, yeah. and it's been yeah. this huge calling for me, this shamanism, and very powerful, and I am so grateful I stepped into it, and I'll be really sad when it's over. Mm -hmm. One of the many processes we've learned is soul retrieval. It is yep. exactly what you just described. And what's amazing is that the being carries on unknowingly. They feel, we feel, each of us, that we're intact. Mm -hmm. When in fact, something happened along the way, like you said, past life or now in this lifetime, and something separated and something separated. And there's all these pieces of us etherically hanging out somewhere. And when you go back in and the retrieval is not difficult, but mm -hmm. it it sometimes takes someone else to guide you yeah, there. and facilitator. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I've done many of these exchanges with people. And it is, I mean, in the moment to see people's reactions when the session is completing and they're like, oh my God, the joy, the lightness. And then they go out and, you know, everything's threaded. I love this about reality. And I love this about going into no thing. I do a lot of no thing exercises or quantum zero point on my own, mm -hmm. where I just go into that space where there's no creation, there's nothing. And then I can bring in what I want and let go of what I want. And you can come out of that. I've come out of that and literally seen everything change around me because of that moment of creation and release. And so it is with soul retrieval. And so it is with cleaning up with the shadow work we're talking about and the projection. It is powerful medicine. Okay. Also watch because when I'm in the vortex, I'm in it I'm in all time. If you go into a past life and you do some kind of healing of trauma, you know, soul retrieval, integration, I watch it just go all around the incarnation wheel. It's updating all the incarnations to that wound, to that in, you know integration that's coming in. This is the beauty of it. When I first started 25 years ago, it was like pulling teeth. Everything was so dense and locked in. It was so difficult. And so I wanna encourage everyone, you know, it may have taken me 30 years to do it, but it won't take you that long because everything is faster and easier now. Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's that's a big benefit of right now of ascension. Yes, everything faster. Um, we talked about, I know you mentioned we have at least another good year of well, I'm just gonna call it funkiness. Yeah. And while ever, the dust is settling and things are being removed and popped up, I know that Bashar had said starting, he said at first on this show that starting around 2024 and beyond is going to be the open contact. And so get ready. No more this disclosure back and forth. This is going to be, we will know for ourselves. If you are aware of it, uh, what do you know about what the powerful galactic transmissions currently taking place are all about? What's happening in that realm? Well, I can speak to um, the ascension is for everything and everybody the galactics our galactic older brothers and sisters are very much in support of our ascension so we can grow up and become part of the galactic community instead of not thinking that we're the only the hot things in the universe, <laughs> not thinking there's anything else so there's a lot of support here and that's been happening for a long time and a lot of people are getting this support in their own inner downloads, their dreams, their meditations, and their own visitations. And that's going to continue to expand more and more. And then, of course, we have our society that's becoming more and more open to it. So then it will be more prevalent. So this is going to continue more and more. So right now, the galactics are available to you. 
if you, if you feel called and if you feel you're part of a star family, because that's what a lot of people are waking yeah. up to, their yeah. star lineage, then this is the work you can also do now is really to tune in and find out where you came from and what your mission is. And are you a star seed here that came to the planet now for this mission, which a lot of people are. So this awareness is available now. And it's going to get more and more prevalent in the general society, in the alternative community, which already knows it's happening, has been talking about this forever, and more and more in mainstream because they can't deny it, that uh, we do have the galactics here to help. And as above, as above, so below, and all levels, there are other galactic entities that are not as in alignment with us mm -hmm. on all levels. So all that information is coming out. Um, but it's part of the ascension tips is to connect with your galactic heritage and your galactic family and have awareness of that because um, that is part of our lineage. Also, every, every month since 2011, I've been leading Gateway Global Meditations, online Gateway Global Meditations, and we always take a moment to go to our home star. And this is important for us to begin to, you know, in the in the quantum field to start to reconnect to our origin because we've been cut off from that through the left brain particle field separation so when people like go, i don't know where i'm from i encourage them to do do this process we're talking about embodiment start bringing more and more of your soul energy into your pillar inside you so you can get a good connection a good sense of what your soul frequency is this is uniquely yours what your unique soul vibration soul frequencies that i say lock on to your unique soul energy signature vibration and then ask your soul to connect you to your home star most of the uh the light workers that i work with we're not from this little itty bitty little Ryan Bell. Most of us are not from here, you guys. Most of us have come from the multiverse, right? We've traveled very far. We come through the galactic center portal and into this very dark, this is a very dark galaxy. Just look out into space. This is a very dark galaxy made of dark matter. Many of us have traveled from crystalline universes. This is very strange for us to come into such a galaxy of dark matter. So I just recommend start there. Just say, say I'm locking on to my origin, right? My soul frequency, my home star, and through quantum physics, the entanglement, you begin to connect again. Meg, so what if your origin was Elohim? How do you connect in that way? Well, I'm, my, I'm actually an angelic guardian. So I'm not from a, a ET race, I'm a angelic. And I still get pulled right through that galactic center into a crystalline universe. I can see it clear as day, the whole, the crystal buildings and everything. So I do have, I am, of course, not in a physical form. I'm in an etheric form from my soul group. So even if you're angelic, you are from a nucleus soul group mm -hmm. that then has clusters that break out. And then we have our mission, whatever that is, part of the guardian angelic race. Uh, so yes, there are, I work with a lot of embodied angels because they recognize that in my signature and they come to me and get help. I don't oh, know if that answered cool. your question. <laughs> we have a home. We have a home. <laughs> Meg, that's so beautiful. I'll tell you something really funny along the conversation all three of us are having right now. Um, this is kind of one of those dumb moments, but it's a cute moment. So in my shamanic work, one of the things we do is call on lineage. And I was having some difficulty. I am in this incarnation Jewish, the lineage of my people, my direct family, in fact, is Mamma Mia, what they went through with the Holocaust and uh -huh. et cetera. It's very, it's pretty serious. It's a movie. Yeah. And still, you know, even way beyond them, that that bloodline is, I've always thought, gosh, I don't know if I want to call on those people, but I'm supposed to call on my lineage. And I had this huge awakening literally a few weeks ago where I thought, oh, that's just not my only lineage. Oh. I have this huge yeah. galactic since the inception of my soul. When I am calling on my lineage, holy moly, what shows yeah. up for me yeah, is you know, the Lyrans and the Andromedans yeah. and the Elohim and, 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 and. Yes, yeah. you got I it. I thought I'd mention that in case anyone else, you know encounters the same yeah you got it 
It's, it's and a, I find through this work, the human lineage gets less and less and less. That's departiculating, mm -hmm. right? And the soul, as you get into what we call the third phase of soul embodiment, that becomes your dominant lineage. The third phase of soul embodiment, that becomes your lineage. Your this soul lineage now takes over. Mm, and our soul's been around for a very, uh, very, very, yeah. it's part of the all. <laughs> so it yeah. is. And you see through the eyes of the soul, right? The soul speaks through, everything starts to change over. Mm, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And Deb, your book, one of the things it discusses, I loved this, is mm -hmm. about abolishing money as we now know it. So talk about that. And also that our passion, I think this goes hand in hand, our passion's gonna be recognized, our mission's gonna be recognized, it's gonna be supported and utilized. That's exciting. That is a world I want to live in. Mm -hmm. So how do you see this abolishment and the honoring of our innate gifts coming about? Well, I see we I think we see this happening already. Money doesn't really function. The money system that we have is being ruled by the world banksters and being manipulated. Not really, it's you know, you can have the most um whoops. Yeah. Where'd you go, Deborah? <laughs> we want Deborah back, Galactic. Yeah, come back. <laughs> Angels, deposit her, please. Gosh, wondering what's happening when I talked about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Little interference there. Um, as we know, it's not very just. There are a few people that have billions of dollars just because of whatever they did in their superpowers, which is great. And then other people scramble to survive. And the imbalance of our monetary system is greater and greater, more than ever now. And it's not based on anything but an agreement that we all agree of this money system. And that's being challenged now with all the other different currencies that can become in or values that be coming in. And the new earth, uh, we aren't going to need money like that. Our survival needs are going to be sustained by what we co-created together. That's going to create a more human, human, humanistic reality for us, where our survival needs are just going to be taken care of. Like nature provides. When, nat when you're with nature, it provides. The, the fruits grow and everything is provided there. So it's going to be more of that. And we'll have various technologies as a galactic use to support our lives. So money is going to be the value that you contribute more because we're going to be more on mission and more in our creativity and more in our creative process. So it's going to be a whole other value system. I can't describe exactly how it's going to be because it's a part of what we will create. And but the information and in that will be coming in more and more. For example, what we know now and what we printed in the Ascension tips really blossomed in the last five years. And before that, that all that wasn't available. So we're going to know more and more and more as things evolve. And as we get direction from our inner blueprint of what we're supposed to be creating and how we're supposed to connect together. So, and it, there will be an agreement field that everyone's provided for. So it's not mm. that if you don't have this thing called money, you're going to starve. You know, if, if, cause there are some people that, um, there are spiritual teachers, you know, in other eras, they were just taken care of. Now they have to have a business. They have to do online programming. They have to know marketing. Right. Right. They, you know, they should just be provided for so they can be their pure essence of a source of fountain of knowledge and teachings. So all that's going to be shifted and how we create our society and how we live and how we do things. So it's it's very humanistic. It's very supportive for each other. And again, the art, the creativity, and the values of what we're here to do on the earth, which is also be together and love each other, is going to be more of our priority than to just pay your rent. You know, mm. because yeah. you've got a mortgage now, which is bought into the banking system that's going to charge you so much as inflation goes up and up and up. All that's starting to crumble and crash. And at some point, people are going to leap into a whole new system of, of I, how we exchange. I think everyone needs to remember the money is part of the hierarchy system. And that is what's on its final days. So 
as we build a new earth, we come in with some kind of new circular system that supports everyone. It sounds like a global kibbutz. <laughs> yeah, doesn't you know, it? Where everybody's gift is a contribution. Yes. They do what they came here to do. Everybody collectively benefits from what's grown. They eat together. They ha they're a true community, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. without one, it crumbles. So yeah. everyone is so important to that structure. Everyone brings their gift. Yes. And I'm so curious while you're saying this about medicine. If you have any foresight about medicine, I, so this is just an interesting aside, but I feel like it's part of it. So I have a, somebody very dear to me who just found out that they have, um, they've known they've had cancer. They've handled it uh, naturally for a really long time and very, very well. And most unfortunately, they just got news from some tests that it's metastasized. Um you know, and they have some love levels in their blood that didn't look good and so forth. So they're going for further testing, but this person has a lot of anger at the medical community at what happened over COVID and, and very distrusting. And I understand that also needed to happen to break a lot of that down, but how does that factor in? Is there trust we can have in the medical community for diagnostics and maybe for other things? Is there a blend? Where is that all going? How could this be handled? Um, as a quantum healer, I do honor that we are in both a physical body and an energy body. So I treat both bodies, right? There's, I think there's a lot of kind of a, a naivete saying, if I just raise my vibration, then my body will be healed. That's not understanding lifetimes of trauma that's held in your energetics. And so it can show up as cancer. That means whenever anyone comes to me with a physical illness, I zero in on, well, what is, what is the core root of that illness? And it's always emotional. Okay. I'm just going to say that you guys, it's emotional. So the more that you work on the transmutation phase that we're talking about, you mentioned anger. Okay. Well, that anger is not helping cancer. All right. So the more that you start to own whatever is held within your bones and muscles and organs, right? All of that needs to be brought into the light and healed and cleared. Uh, so your body can actually start to function holistically. So we're working at both physical. So I, I have been, you know, I love acupuncture and herbs. I've been doing that for over 10, 20 years. Um, I, I got COVID right uh, in the start of it in January 2022. Deborah and I were both at the event that gave us COVID and I worked with Chinese medicine then. There's, there's, but also if I need a test, I'll go get a test because so I think what you need to do is you need to cherry pick what works for you from all the modalities, all that's available until our medicine is pulled out of the hierarchy. That's the problem. It's for profit medicine here in the United States, and this is where we get in trouble. So the more that we are altering from hierarchy system into circular community, then I think our healing modalities and medicines will also update as well and become more holistic or natural. But also we are channeling in new technology that's coming in so not to be where you just don't trust anything, you know, you know, start to, to, this is where you have to learn discernment. And that's part of the ascension is, is learning how to vibe things. Uh, I also feel that we were talking about removing the veils between left and right brain. I think by doing this, we're beginning to weave and integrate the bicameral brain where we're using both simultaneously. And this is where we're building back. And this is what I do in my healing practice, the mind matter connection. We did not have that when the veils were between the two brains. So the more that you integrate uh, and, and work with activating more of that, the neural pathways in the right brain, which is, which is very weak, where we're left brain dominant, you start opening up the bicameral brain, create that mind matter connection because our bodies our energy does listen to us the more that we link that back up we can get in there and we can start to pull out unhealthy cells we can start to work with our own blueprint birth new healthy cells there's a lot you can do when you start to bring the mind matter connection back together again brilliant thank you for that so much and thank you that you even do that work with people 
And I'd like to share that this is the times we're in because the medical, our medical system is broken. It is based on greed and drugs and not honoring the holistic. Although there, there's been many years now of holistic medicine coming into the scene. That's true. But it was really obvious during COVID when the holistic medicine wanted to come out because there was many treatments for COVID that were being censored. So <laughs> it's really obvious to people now, why was all that censored? Um, and there's lots of truth that's coming out now. And even in politics, we have some people that are running that are exposing all this. So the med people are going to understand the medical system really has its limits. And as Meg said, you have to be discerning. You can use it for what it does well mm -hmm. and really embrace all the other holistic methods and the new technologies that are coming in, like the EE system. There is going to be so much more of the new technologies coming into the planet. Now, the, now this was stopped for many years with the founder, Dr. Sandra Michael Rose. She tried to get it out there for the last 20 years, and it was blocked. And she knew at some point it would just bust open and nothing could stop it. And that's what happened last year. She went on a show. After that, she got 72,000 emails, inquiries, and it just broke open. So technologies like this, this is scalar wave technology that was suppressed with Nikola Tesla is now going to come out and it's not going to be stopped because that's what's going to happen now. There's this quickening, the truth, the information, everything's going to come to us now that we can utilize. So we just got to tune into our own personal journey, let the synchronicities, the gifts, the connections come through for our own healing journey, because it's all a personal journey. and systems are going to change radically in the next few years as all this continues to come, come out and get revealed mm -hmm. and healed. I would also caution about uh, putting any foreign frequencies into your system. I would be very careful with that because we were born with a very specific designed light body by our galactic origin. And this is where I'm concerned about what's happening in the new age community where people are saying, well, I'm just going to put my energy in you and I'm going to do this and this, this. I would say very careful folks with that. Oh my God. So thank you so much. Both of you, you know, we're so tapped in. Discernment has been my word. And I personally have an experience. I had major left hip issues. And one of the things I, I know happened with me, I see happening with my friend with the cancer is the moment you say it, nobody's there to just listen or process. The moment you say it, everybody's like, I know a place in Mexico. I know a book you need to read. I know someone who I know. It's actually overwhelming yeah. when you get news like this. And all you want to do is first just be with it and digest what's happening. Then the next thing, discerning. I think go to the medical community, get all the tests you possibly can and get information. Information is power. Know what is happening in your body. And then you can see, you know, I, I showed my friend working with a pendulum, like find out for you have discernment. Is this right? Mm. Just because someone said it means, means nothing. nothing. There's like a billion things out there and tons of claims, but know what works for you and what's right for your path mm. and your being. But I know when I went through my hip thing, Oh my goodness. I try, I did so many things. So I took so many things that were natural. I saw incredible healers without a doubt. People cleared up so much in me, but you know, when I really also, I needed a blend of both, including the medical community and it was the right path for me. So I love that you're talking about this and that there's the good to come. What's breaking down the new will emerge. So with that, Deborah Giusti, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Um, I'm going to keep sharing this message because I feel like people are all over the planet are waking up and going, what the, you know, what is happening? So for me, I feel like letting them know they're going through their ascension process with the opportunity to really evolve to the next level and sharing the ascension tips so that they can see them and understand, oh, this is why my life fell apart because I am going forward and what was is not of the vibration and the quality that I meant to evolve to. So I needed that to dissolve and give people hope and understanding that we came here for this birthing process. And it's really exciting that it's all moving forward and that things are dissolving that are not 
of the light and we are moving towards the light and it's all a personal journey and we're all in it together as well. So we're all here to help each other. So this is one of my missions as well as whatever else, the next project that spirit gives me to do. <laughs> and Meg Benedicti, what do you next dare to dream? Future dreams and goals for you. Well, I dare to dream of all of us living as the embodied divine human, creating this new earth together, this new community, this new circle of family of, of light in a way that we can not probably even begin to comprehend what that would be like, but we need to, we need to start imagining it. We need to start dreaming of it. We need to start get passionate about it because that sets it into motion into the quantum field. So I dare to dream we ascend into that world. Thank you both so much for coming on the show today. It's been amazing conversation. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. And folks, if you would like to get your copy, go to Ascension Tips, just like in the title, ascensiontips.com. And I end today's show with this quote from Deborah and Meg's Ascension Tips book. There is a massive shift occurring within yourself and throughout the planet known as Ascension. Ascension is the accelerated spiritual process occurring in humanity and all planetary life forms during this cosmic evolutionary cycle. You are experiencing a personal and collective transformation through this unique time. This planetary ascension is currently accelerating and offers everyone the opportunity to live and manis- manifest from a state of oneness. Mm-hmm. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, the weekly Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashinger. Leave a comment. I read them all. And I'm grateful for all of you being on this journey. Next week on the show, the guest is the amazing Sunny Dawn Johnston, who is an acclaimed author, teacher, spiritual business mentor, and psychic medium. Thank you all for joining. I know you got so much out of the show. And remember your place and what's happening. You don't need to do this alone. There are magnificent teachers, magnificent books out there to read and help guide you and be part of this collective community. We came here for great purpose. So do dare to create all your dreams into your reality. Thank you for joining today.